Just as a reminder to everyone, we will be recording this session, so you will be able to view it on the department YouTube channel after the seminar has concluded. Today, I would like to welcome Professor Kadri Dadala. Thank you so much for speaking with us today, Professor Kadri. Dr. Kadri is a professor in the mining department with seven years of industry experience at, at Homestake Mining Company, working as a mining engineer at open pit and underground mines, as well as the manager of technical service. And 30 years of academic experience at Colorado School of Mines as a professor teaching surface mine design, geostatistics, operational research based mine planning and optimization courses, as well as performing research applied to operational mine planning optimization of net present values of projects, GBS-based track dispatching, geostatistics applied to uncertainty analysis using large ge geologic data sets, environmental contaminant characteristic uh, characterization and cleanup. Professor Kadri will be talking to us today about their work with managing large scale data for mine planning at Nevada Gold Mines. Without further ado, please welcome Professor Kadri. Thank you, Pati. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, um, welcome to graduate mining seminar uh, that is taking place uh, four o'clock uh, on Wednesday afternoon, every Wednesday afternoon in the mining department at the Colorado School of Mines. Um, last, uh, middle of last week, um, we received an announcement that uh, uh, the presenter for this Wednesday was not uh, going to be able to make it. And uh, they were looking for volunteers uh, to fill today's spot. And uh, as such, I volunteered uh, with a topic uh, that I know well. And, uh, and I would like to share with you an interesting story that has developed uh, during the last two years uh, in Nevada in terms of merging the mining and processing operations of two important mining companies uh, uh, in, in, in North America, Berwick Gold with Newmont Gold. And uh, in the, uh, July 1st of uh, uh, 2019, um, they uh, were able to pull together uh, a joint venture company into joint venture company called Nevada Gold Mines, all their uh, respected uh, properties, the mines, and the process plants into a single operating company. And uh, the joint venture was structured uh, so that uh, it's uh, going to be operated by Beric, uh, uh, by Beric uh, under uh, a um, joint venture agreement. And uh, it was going to be owned by Beric 61.5%, Newmont uh, Gold 38.5%. And uh, uh, JV will have a board, uh, three from Beric and two from uh, Newmont five uh, uh, board, uh, board of managers, and then they were going to establish three committees, uh, finance committee, exploration committee, and technical committee, and uh, each company will have three people uh, 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 on, on these uh, committees. So this is the general uh, JV's uh, structure. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about some of the details of the, of the G JV. And uh, as uh, we are all the mining engineers here with the mining background, geologists, and then I'm going to talk to you about uh, how uh, planning and the uh, operation of multi-mines, multi-processes, multi-ore types uh, can, be, uh, uh, can be handled uh, 
um, uh, as, a, as a combined uh, unit and what are the challenges uh, in doing so and uh, how we are able to uh, come up with the, the overall global uh, uh, mind planning of these uh, operations. It's very interesting. And uh, um, uh, so um, uh, this uh, just summarizes uh, what I just said. And uh, uh, the JV agreement signed on July 1st, 2019, and it has been operating almost a little over two years, very successfully. And the JV uh, uh, was about to, is, is going to produce about 3.8 million ounces of gold this year. And um, uh, this uh, slide is very uh, interesting for mining engineers. Uh, uh, general knowledge, there are about six uh, gold mining districts in, in, the, Europe, in, in, the, in the world uh, with production of 200 million ounces. Okay? And Great Basin, where Newmont and Berwick uh, joint ventured the Nevada gold mines, uh, uh, mines uh, located, it's called Great Basin area, is one of these districts. Uh, uh, important districts. And another one is uh, ABTB uh, Gold Mining District in Canada, and then the Brimian uh, uh, Gold uh, uh, District uh, in Western uh, Africa. And then, the, of course, we know Witwaters Rand uh, uh, Gold Mines in South Africa. And then Tian Shan, then in south of Siberia, Uzbekistan, and north of Kazakhstan, uh, Kyrgyzstan, and uh, and uh, the last one is uh, Western Australia KCGM uh, uh, gold mining uh, uh, complex with Kalgoorlie gold mines and Buddington gold mines and, and, and uh, so on in Western Australia. These are huge. Uh, uh, pro prospect this grounds if somebody wants to be in, 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 in gold mining. And, uh, um, so in, in Nevada, uh, Barrick uh, and uh, Newmont own these gold mines uh, along the uh, three significant trends. Um, one of them uh, is the Carlin trend, and south end of the Carlin trend, uh, Newmont operated mines and processes, and northern uh, portion of the Carlin Trent, Beric operated mines and processes, okay, process plants. And then we have uh, on the lower left here, uh, 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 the, with the ellipses, uh, we have uh, uh, Battle Mountain Trent, and uh, where Beric had it is mines and, and, and two process plants. And then, uh, uh, and then we have Getchell Trent up north. And uh, uh, here we have Getchell Trent, the uh, Battle Mountain Trent, and Carlin Trent. And uh, uh, with a uh, uh, significant number of uh, mines and processes. The overall, this uh, merger <laughs> 10 underground mines. 12 open pit mines and two roster facilities, one in the uh, Gold Strike area, another one at the uh, uh, Gold Core area, and uh, two autoclaves, one in Gold Strike area, another one in the, um, in the uh, Getchell Trent near Twin Creeks, and uh, two flotation plants uh, and four oxide mills. And, uh, so there were about uh, um, uh, 10 process gold uh, ore processing plants in the merger and a lot of heat leach uh, pads also. And, and uh, 22 mines, 22 mines were put together into one management structure, okay, to take advantage of the, uh, uh, synchronization of these operations together. They used to be operated uh, by two separate companies, 
and uh, and then two separate managements and uh, and then uh, even though uh, some of the mines were right next to one another <laughs> and uh, uh, so they have, they were finally able to put these uh, uh, these uh, projects uh, mines and process plants into under under one management okay and uh, So this uh, summarizes uh, um, uh, what uh, they envisioned uh, that will come out of uh, uh, come out of this uh, this merger. Um, three point uh, five to three point eight million ounce production during the almost next uh, initially next five years, but now they say it's going to happen at next ten years, and. Uh, uh, at a cost of uh, all in sustaining cost of $920, $950, assuming that uh, um, the gold is uh, $1,750, they're going to be making $800 an uh, ounce uh, from their uh, production in, in Nevada. Okay. And uh, um, in, in terms of um, value creation, uh, operational growth synergies, they said by, by merging these managements into under one, they are going to save about 450 to $500 million a year. Okay. And uh, so significant uh, operational efficiency was going to be introduced to Nevada gold mines operations. Uh, so they, they were expecting that. Uh, long-term value creation of close to $5 billion uh, next 10 years. And uh, the total reserves uh, in, uh, uh, in Nevada gold mines, 43.8 million ounces with the average grade of 2.3 grams per ton, okay? And uh, uh, if you look at the, and compare that to what the average grade uh, of reserves for Newmont is, it's close to one gram per ton. And then uh, if you look at all the barracks uh, 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 worldwide uh, reserves, it is under uh, uh, two grams per ton. So Nevada uh, <laughs> operations overall is 2.3 grams, which is uh, considered a uh, uh, little high grade uh, uh, reserves huh? uh, higher than the many of our operations. Um, total Nevada gold mines now uh, employs over 7,000 people, 7,000 people in all these uh, operations. And uh, uh, their uh, uh, headcounts, uh, uh, the, the Carlin, the surface underground, they have over 3,500 people, Long Canyon, 252. And uh, uh, in, the, in the Western uh, uh, part of the trans, uh, uh, Twin Creeks, Turquoise Ridge, nine, almost 1,000 people, 500 people in the, in the uh, Phoenix, Long Tree area, and then the and then another uh, almost 1,600 people in the Cortez uh, Gold Rush uh, area. And uh, um, a lot of people are employed uh, by this uh, company now. And uh, so this is uh, general uh, management structure. I, I kept this uh, in the presentation because that lab uh, here, when they mean, is the general manager of Phoenix and Lone Tree. He was one of my students here in the 1997, 1998. Okay. And uh, uh, he made it all the way to, uh, to the uh, executive level in Nevada gold mine operations. And, uh, and, and two, another two of uh, my students here are students. One of them, um, is the general manager of Leeville uh, Underground Mine. And another one uh, is the general manager of uh, Gold Strike Underground Mine uh, in this uh, uh, 
in, in this Nevada gold mines uh, uh, JV. And so our, our students uh, uh, in within about uh, uh, 15 years, uh, they are able to go up to high level uh, of uh, management within, uh, within these uh, uh, operating mines. And we're, we're proud of uh, producing these uh, undergraduate students who, uh, be, who take the leadership positions in, the, in, in, uh, in, in few years, okay? And uh, they're they are very young people uh, and uh, we are proud of that. Okay, and uh, so this shows uh, um, that uh, at the bottom of the value creation uh, curve is the optimized operations. And I'm gonna talk to you about what that means. Uh, and lowering cutoff grades uh, and lowering cash costs and longer profitable mines. And, uh, um, and then the, what are the components uh, uh, of uh, 450, 500 million dollar per year uh, synergies, 10% um, uh, uh, of those synergies uh, are integrated planning of these mines. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna talk about that uh, per year, and uh, uh, so this is another details uh, on value creation through synergies and uh, supply chain and. Uh, and uh, they see a lot of growth opportunities uh, uh, that will come not only uh, from uh, current operations, but uh, also current exploration, uh, uh, additional current exploration uh, expenditures. And uh, this project shows uh, um, uh, what will be uh, coming up uh, in the in next five years. Uh, 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 in, in terms of projects across these uh, three trends. Um, so we have the Getchell trend here, and the part of Getchell trend still un underexplored, and then we have Battle Mountain trend here, and then Carlin trend here, okay? And uh, um, this uh, slide shows uh, uh, reserves and resources. Uh, uh, in the gold stripe, um, uh, legal area, gold quarry, uh, they have um, uh, uh, over uh, uh, in those uh, four uh, mines, over um, 9 million uh, ounces of uh, reserves. And then in Twin Creeks, the Turquoise Ridge, uh, Twin Creeks, 3.2 million ounces, Turquoise Ridge, 9.1 million ounces. Uh, mm -hmm. So almost. Uh, uh, 12 million ounces, and then Cortez Gold, gold Rush, 10.7 million ounces in proven and probable uh, reserve category with additional 12.5 million ounces in the measured and indicated uh, category, okay? And then the four mile, uh, I'm gonna show you extension of this uh, Gold Rush, uh, Cortez Hill uh, area, and they have a new discovery with incredible uh, intercepts, uh, 25 grams per ton and uh, um, in intercepts uh, with meaningful thickness. And uh, so um, a lot of gold to be mined next 10 years from these mines and processed uh, uh, close to with these 10, uh, uh, 10 process plants. And high grade reserves, uh, again, uh, uh, I talked about this. And the uh, tier one assets, uh, 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 how, how, do we, how do we define tier one assets? Uh, um, tier one assets are those assets that has significant proven and probable reserves, like uh, 10 million ounces. They are capable of uh, producing uh, over 500,000 ounces, okay, from each of these uh, assets. And uh, the third, their costs are uh, at the lower quartile of all the companies producing gold. And their costs are less than, uh, for, with all those companies, less than 25%, okay? 
So if gold price goes down, okay, and these three tier one assets, it won't impact the, uh, what the, uh, it won't impact that profitability because they are low cost operations, okay? And uh, um, okay, and uh, and geology wise, some of these uh, like Libyl, uh, uh initially mined from surfers, and it's going uh, down the, uh, deeper. And uh, so uh, cross section A B, and then we have B C here. So A B and B C. And uh, so how uh, these structures are dipping and then to the, to the uh, north and also uh, uh, to the uh, south, uh, southeast. And uh, what is interesting is uh, Leeville is, is like uh, uh, 2,000 uh, feet uh, depth uh, underground mine, okay? And at the low, the deeper levels, uh, like the 2,500 feet, 3,000 feet uh, depth, uh, they are uh, uh, they are having significant uh, uh, structures at with the high grade uh, intercepts. Okay, so they are open in the down the uh, dip direction uh, and and. Uh, uh, with significant potential for additional uh, um, uh, resources to be put into the uh, uh, reserves. And uh, so it says that only one third of the potential uh, contained answers have been converted into reserves and resources. So as they drill these out, uh, uh, they should uh, add a lot uh, more into current uh, uh, quantity of uh, uh, mineral resource and reserves. And, uh, so gold trash, same story. And uh, they, they have this four mile discovery and uh, it, it's going to be put into the JV after they get handle on the, um, on the resource and reserves. And right now it is kept uh, uh, outside of the JV. And, uh, and Turquoise Ridge, uh, again, this mine uh, uh, was uh, purchased by, by Beric and it was very close to Twin Creeks, Newmont's Twin Creeks. Turquoise Ridge is underground uh, uh, gold mine with the very high uh, grades, and uh, they were using a cutoff grade of 10.2 grams per ton. And uh, to get this uh, proven and probable reserves of 9.1 million uh, uh, ounce. Uh, and then the, after the JV, they, they reduced the cutoff grade to 6.5 grams, increasing uh, these. Uh, uh, resource and reserves further up. And uh, um, so these are shaft, uh, turquoise rich mine is shaft and uh, Twin Creeks is uh, currently surface. They're planning on going underground and uh, with the 12 million ounce, uh, uh, yeah, 12 million ounce uh, uh, of uh, proven uh, and probable reserves. And uh, all right. Uh, so we have, uh, future ex exploration upsides. Uh, this slide is, is talking about, uh, I, I mentioned that these, uh, four trends, uh, or three trends have significant, uh, uh, upside potential for, uh, upside exploration potential. And uh, in Carlin Trent, uh, there's another area that, uh, that hasn't been explored and they are uh, currently uh, outlining it to be explored. And, uh, um, and uh, it, they, they call that uh, uh, a little boulder basin. And uh, 
They are hitting significant intercepts uh, with high grades. Uh, and uh, so this, this area uh, also um, is very pro prospective grounds uh, for further exploration of this JV. And uh, so these are future potentials for new discoveries. Uh, uh, they drilled uh, at the gold rush. They even drilled uh, a hole um, down, um, down dip from four miles. Look at these interceptions, 10.7 meters, 24.8 grams per ton, 4.6 meters, 49.4 grams per ton. 6.1 meters, 21.2 uh, grams per ton. I mean, this is open uh, in the down dip direction. And uh, uh, my, my uh, comment to you guys is if you go and work for uh, Nevada Joint, Nevada Gold Mines, and you do a good job, you're hardworking and you're honest and uh, you have high integrity, you can be that rest of your life with this type of discoveries, future potential for discoveries. And uh, uh, OK, um, these are uh, some of the details, uh, um, uh, some of additional pictures, uh, the history. Um, uh, Chimney Creek, Twin Creeks, uh, uh, initially, you know, when I was working for Homestake Mining Company in between 1985 and 1992, um, uh, Chimney Creek was operated by gold fields. It was another mine and, and pit. And then the Rabbit Creek was operated by Santa Fe Pacific. And uh, it was another pit and, and with a, uh, with a uh, oxide uh, processing plant and CIL plants. So in 1993, they merged that uh, into uh, Twin Creek Assets, Santa Fe Pacific. Uh, and then the Newmont uh, purchased Santa Fe Pacific. And in 1997, they merged uh, with Newmont. And then, the, and then later on under Nevada Gold Mines, Twin Creek's operations merged with Turquoise Ridge. Uh, and uh, so this whole complex uh, has both open pits, an underground mine, an oxide uh, mill, other clay process, and uh, uh, to, to process this uh, 12 million uh, uh, ounces of uh, proven and probable uh, uh, mm -hmm. gold ores. And, uh, And uh, these are some of the highlights uh, um, into um, autoclave, oxide mill, and heap leach facilities. And uh, autoclave in the Twin Creeks is about, uh, um, let's see, I think they have two, uh, two trains. Uh, and uh, with uh, uh, 3 million ton, uh, uh, no, 3,000 ton per day in each uh, train, its total capacity is about six to 8,000 ton per day, uh, other clay. All right. Uh, so we talked about these and Turquoise Ridge. Here's Twin Creeks. Uh, um, aerial view of Twin Creeks, they have base dumps. Uh, um, and then the bio, bio uh, cell, the bio leach, uh, and then the, they have, uh, uh, let's see, uh, where, where is the sage mill here? So we have refractory stockpiles and uh, uh, the waste dumps, the pit, and uh, this uh, small vista pit and uh, merged later on with this, uh, Northern pit, and they call this one the uh, super pit, big pit, and then the, they have sage mill and juniper mill on this side here, and the huge footprint of uh, the pits, uh, and then the, uh, it's about the, uh, 
Uh, I don't know what the uh, the the turquoise rich is is within the uh, within the uh, haulage distance of ore to the mill, and so uh, they used to um, uh, they used to process turquoise uh, uh, rich ore at the Twin Creeks mills as toll, but now uh, it will be under one operation. So gold, uh, gold strike history this is very interesting, and uh, it's close to uh, uh, close to my my uh, my uh, my heart, and uh, I'll tell you a story about it. And uh, um, in uh, 1987, when I was at Homestake uh, uh, Mining Company, <laughs> this property north of uh, 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 north of Newman's operations, uh, uh, now what is known as Gold Strike Area and Meikle Area, became available um, because it was uh, owned by uh, Western States, small Western States mining company. And, uh, and that uh, property had about uh, uh, 290,000 ounces. Uh, and then they were mining it from very small pits and uh, uh, the, the, the veins that was coming from this huge deposit underneath, okay? And they had one hole um, towards the south, uh, southern part of the Gold Strike and uh, at about eight, 800, uh, 900 feet, and it in intercepted high grade uh, 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 mineralization. And, uh, um, you know, the 1987 gold price was uh, $380, $400. Western states were having uh, difficulty and they decided to sell the property. And uh, so Homestake put together a team and they were from uh, San Francisco. <laughs> and then uh, they went out uh, and then looked at the project and the geologist Robert uh, Blakestead he was located in the, in Reno. He he, I still remember his memo uh, to these guys who are going out there, and he said we should get this this property at whatever the cost is. Okay, get this. Uh, I don't know if he was even included in the uh, in the exploration team or, or part of the team that's evaluating this gold strike property, but his. Uh, uh, Recommendation, the guy, geologist in the trend says, get this property, right? Homestake offered uh, close to $30 million. And the Barrick, uh, they just had this Mercury property in, uh, in Utah. And uh, it was very small company. They offered $62 million for this uh, uh, Western States property north of Newman. I don't know what Newman uh, offered. Newman didn't even uh, get this property. I know the Newman story. You know the Newman story. <laughs> and then the Barrick got it, right, for $62 million in 1982, uh, 1987. What is it? Yeah, right here. The rest is story. This property produced 30 million ounces of gold by 2006. And uh, 40 million ounces of gold by 2012. And uh, probably they are right now uh, around 45, 50 million ounces of gold uh, uh, production. And uh, this was unbelievable uh, uh, a story of taking a chance and getting a property in a prospective uh, ground and making uh, a mine out of it. So if I go to this trend, trend map, okay. Uh, so this property is uh, right here and Newman properties are right here, right? And uh, the Barrick was not even here when this property became available, right? And uh, 
Um, anyway, this 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 was an interesting uh, uh, experience uh, for me to see, to observe, and to tell you the story. All right, and now that uh, I'm gonna next uh, almost uh, ten minutes, I'm gonna go down and talk about uh, how what are the challenges uh, to plan. Okay. Uh, to plan all these, I mean, 22 mines and, and, and 10 process plants as one uh, giant uh, thing, right? And uh, so um, most of the time, mine planning involves dividing these deposits into blocks, and uh, we call them the uh, the block models and uh, and the mine planners have their challenges in determining for each of these blocks in these deposits to decide whether or not a given block should be mined and if it is going to be mined as open pit or underground okay and then once the block is mined uh, well first decide when it will be mined. We have to decide if it is going to be mined and then when it is going to be mined and then decide uh, what we'll do with the block, right? It'll be a waste, it'll go to waste dump, the leach pad, um, oxide mill, roaster, <laughs> or other claves. So mining engineers challenge and they have to decide this while maximizing the value uh, that they will get from this mining operation and uh, subject to many constraints, many constraints. We have uh, capacity constraints, mining capacity constraints, uh, process capacity constraints, the, the haulage constraints, environmental constraints. Sometimes we have to bury waste material um, in such a way that uh, um, potentially acid generating rock is covered by the uh, uh, non-acid generating rocks, right? Uh, so we have to plan these and, and decide when each of these blocks are mined uh, such that all those constraints are satisfied while we maximize the net present value of these projects. So um, this problem is huge, right? And uh, it can be formulated as a mathematical model and then, uh, uh, and then solved, okay, as large scale optimization problem. And then the, um, uh, with millions of uh, uh, variables representing, by the way, each of those block models can contain anywhere from three or 4 million to 20 million blocks. And uh, uh, so um, solving this big, huge problem hasn't been possible up to about a couple of years ago. And uh, um, we divided the problem into sub-problems and solved them and then put them together. First, we, we solved the ultimate pit limit problem, which decided which blocks we should mine and which blocks should, we should left in the ground, okay? And then we divided this ultimate pit uh, resource into pushbacks, to tell us every five years where this mine would progress. And then out on the right here, we come up with a uh, determination of cutoff grades, which decides with help us when we should mine a given block and what destination we should send to. So this is a circular analysis, okay? So imagine um, every mine within this uh, out of, um, uh, 12 open pits and underground mines. Uh, this is for open pit, but they are, they are more or less trying to, to figure out what the uh, blocks should be mined, okay? And then the, once they are mined, okay, what direction they need to send. Now, the, the, the resources from, uh, uh, from, uh, Cortez gold research area can go 
which is about 35, uh, 18 miles or to 35 miles, can go to the, to the processing plants at the, at the Gold Core area on Carlin, okay? And, uh, and then some of the, the ores from Gold Strike now can come to uh, uh, Carlin Roaster. And Gold Core ore can go to uh, Gold Strike Alaclave, right? And uh, uh, so uh, if, if we look at it as, as one, um, so all the blocks will go to these destinations, stockpiles, waste dumps, and uh, uh, depending on what the rock types they are, what the ore types they are, and uh, okay. So from each of these mines, if you're doing just single, single pit planning, then you say you divide it into phases, and then you say potentially a block from here can go to each of these options, okay? And then you determine what type of dollars you're going to get if that block goes to one of these paths, what the net revenue is, and then try to assign this destination to that block based on that. But the thing is, each of these have capacities, okay? So we have all these resources and they can go and take a place at each of these uh, uh, processing plants. So which ore should come to these processing plants? What the, uh, uh, what, Pits so that we maximize the net present value. Look at this one. Now, is, we used to do that for a single pit. Now we want to do this when something merged like this with many pits, with many underground mines, with many processes, okay? So uh, not, only, not only where a given block can go to, but how it is rated with individual blocks from other pits, okay? This comes into dealing with large, huge data sets, data issues, okay? And uh, so uh, this is the challenge that we're, we're working through uh, to come up with the uh, optimized mine plans for Nevada that will maximize the net present value subject to all these additional constraints. And this is the, 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 the mine planning challenge for no other gold mines. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> all the reserves that you are showing in the slide, um, reserve, are also dependent on cutoff rate, and cutoff rate is a function of price, right? Yes. Now that the price is up to 100, if their base number for calculation was 950, all those numbers should have changed, or are they? Um, the, the, those reserves are calculated on the basis of $1,200 gold price. Okay. And that's my question. Okay. Yeah. 900, 1200. Now that but the costs are $950 per ounce, right. the operating costs. Okay, and the, the, that that says the the minimum. Okay, if uh, a given block has uh, gold in it, at minimum, nine fifty or nine. Right, uh, and that's my question. If if now the price is uh, let's say seventeen hundred, right? yeah, compared to twelve hundred, then the reserve should have actually upgraded or updated too, right? I mean, the cut of grade goes up. Goes yeah, down. unfortunately, you know, um, you can't. You know these companies uh, choose a cutoff, right. cutoff rate, or choose a price um, that will not be impacted uh, uh, with the upsides and downsides it's in the gold three, price. It's a three-year, it's a three-year backward-looking average, and it moves forward. Okay, so yeah, it's not changing. Dynamic and updated. It is the dynamic, but not in a daily or even right. yearly basis. Right. Any other questions? Yeah, just yes. a comment to make it more complicated. Okay. We're in my geology head and having worked here. Each ore type can has 
Each block has a ore type with an average grade and different recovery depending on the different processes and different costs associated with where those destinations go to. So the other variable behind here is the geological variable in every block. It, it's, it's stunning how complex this is. Uh, yeah, if you, if you look at this one, um, we, had, uh, we, we have 17 material types, okay? 17 yeah. material types and then 15 grade intervals for each of those material types. And depending on what the block grade is, it, it is recovery will change because higher grades have different recoveries than lower grades, right? Depending on what material type it is in, that recovery changes. As well. Where it's been processed, right? And uh, this uh, analysis, we're able to take all those constraints, uh, all, all, all that information, and then it becomes huge data, right? And, and, uh, and how do we take all these into account and integrate it into multi-mine, <laughs> multi-process mine planning uh, scheme to maximize the overall, the global uh, uh, profitability of Nevada gold mines, right? And uh, believe it or not, we're able to solve this. And with, with some, uh, some tricks, <laughs> uh, we aggregate the blocks into- You're gonna say they're simplifying, simplifying assumptions, right? We aggregate, you know, we sort of individual blocks and then we aggregate them into a uh, phase bench. And then the, we solve it at the bench level and we know what blocks are in each bench. We can assign the blocks uh, ultimately what destinations they are. Yes. A great challenge, great challenge, right? Uh, um, as, as these uh, complexes become uh, multi-mine, multi-process uh, 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 projects, operations, then uh, it brings all the challenges into mine planning aspect also. Yeah. Yes. So here the point is the mine, uh, the mine operation is already exists and the processing planet already existed. Yes. And then the planning is with this constraints of the already existed facilities, right? Right, right. But uh, when they were separate, right? And uh, from these mines, they made plans to use these processing plants, right? But now, they are it, no, when you share it, it, some of the high grade and the gold strike mines can come and be processed at the roadster in, in, the, in the south, in the Conlon. But some of the high grade can go to other clay in the gold strike. <laughs> and all, all those robbing uh, uh, is different now, right? And, but not only for single mind going to these processes, but you need to take all this into account for all the minds together. You know, what do I have here? What do I have here? What do I have here? And uh, should this go before this? or this should go before that. And the, the timing of it, the sequencing of it. So like, for yeah. example, I believe such planning, it will uh, extend the, the life of the of these whole mines. Of course, it creates value, yeah. right? So yeah. uh, do you take in considerations like building new processing planets in specific locations that mm -hmm. in a specific period of time that will, be, uh, will uh, produce very high profit for like yeah. several months. Yeah, once you once you generate this model and you say, how about if I add this new processing plant with the potential these ores can go to that, what's the MPV of that? You know, in, instead of just looking at the, the profitability of that single plant with a single pit, you look at the, the operation of new plant with the ores coming from all those pits, right? And, and, Same uh, thing goes with the new discovery. Yeah. The new discovery is made, it perturbs the whole situation. Yes, yeah, exactly. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, great. I enjoyed giving my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gregory. Thank you.
Uh, we didn't ask the audience if they have questions. Yeah. Uh -huh.